Okay, so here we are at the Bolton christening of the trail. The new Bolton section is just five miles east of East Hartford, actually. On the east side of Manchester is a town called Bolton, and this is the notch. Uh, in the distance there is the beautiful uh, bridge that they put over Route 44, Route 6. And we have in front of us the, the Greenway car. It's getting a lot of attention this morning. There we go. The plug-in, my next car. There we go, I like that. It's a plug-in hybrid, finally, yes. Yeah. Hi, I'm uh, Bill O'Neill. Many years ago, about 50 years ago, Director of Public Works in Manchester, working for an outstanding city manager, Bob Weiss. I presented a schematic of some regional multi-use trails called Greenways, and then we fast forward to here today. And on the adventure, I was thrilled to have, about 20 years ago, walk through the woods from Manchester across where we're standing now to Bolton Town Hall and suggested that it's time to push some trails towards Canada because we are the East Coast Greenway and we believe and will build 3,000 miles of trails from Canada to Key West. But this particular day, organized by Gwen Marion, a very hardworking Greenway person who put together a thank you event to say to the many uh, supporters and taxpayers, thank you for your dollars, thank you for your trail, and then to follow this tomorrow, we'll go down the street and we'll be in Charter Oak Park, Manchester, and Rotary International will do the same thing. They'll say, thank you, we have now connected three towns in a 20-mile trail. And the Rotary will call that their uh, rim ride, Rotary in Motion. But anyhow, it's not about me, it's about the opportunity to hear people to say thank you to people like Steve Mitchell, the Energizer Bunny that goes, 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 his mama, and that's where the genes came from. And uh, so it, it's just a fun day about, not me, but the event. And uh, we're pushing away and we hope to be to the post office in Bolton sometime soon. Thank you, Conda. Thank you, D-E-E-P, Manchester, Vern, and East Hartford. And even for me, I'm running out of words. But uh, thank you for the chance, Steve. Appreciate it. So thank you so much, everyone, for coming here. I can't tell you how thrilled I am to be here today. Uh, it, it's, it's really just incredible that, that this trail got built, and it's an amazing piece of infrastructure for our, for our town and for the region. Uh, this is, what this is, is a, it's a connection between the Charter Oak Greenway that you see along the highway and the Hop River State Park Linear Trail, which was uh, it used to only be on that side of the pond. And now we have a, a closure between those two sections. And it's also a new section of the East Coast Greenway, which has national significance. It took a lot of people a lot of time to get here. And so I want to recognize, we're going to have some remarks by some of the people who helped build this trail. But I just wanted to mention some of the people who are not going to be speaking, who had a, a significant hand in this. Uh, first of all, I want to mention the trio of, of people who really got this ball started back in, I'd say, the late 80s, early 90s, and that's Dave Killian, Bob Lassard, and Bill O'Neill. And Bob Lassard and Bill O'Neill are both here. I don't know if Dave Killian is here. But here's Bob Lassard, and, and there's Bill O'Neill. So. Uh, Bob, Bob Lassard told me yesterday that uh, uh, Bob and Dave were on the Bolton Recreation Commission back in the late 80s, 80s, early 90s, and they wanted to support something other than the traditional sports, stick and ball sports. So, and they had read about Bill O'Neill and his work in Manchester, 
So they got a hold of Bill and um, wanted to meet with him to talk. And apparently at this first meeting, Bill shows up with a whole set of design plans already for this trail, complete with catch basins and uh, curb cuts and all that. So Bill was Bill has always been way ahead of the of the game. Um, and then Bill and Dave and uh, Bob took a very early walk of the proposed route. So they were the ones who really started the momentum. I want to also mention Bob Mora, who is here. Right where you. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Bob was the first selectman in 2006 when the first set of grants started to be submitted. And he was the leader of the, of the, of the Board of Selectmen at that time, which passed a resolution uh, stating that this trail had local, state, and national significance. So that was a huge step for the town of Bolton to take, to make that acknowledgment. And he also supported early grant submissions. And then he was first selectman all the way through almost right to the end of construction. So it was really under Bob's leadership that this whole project got started and got completed. So thank you, Bob, for your leadership. I also want to mention Pam Sawyer, who is here. In the back. back there in the, in the tan sweater. Uh, Pam was our state representative in 2006 when the momentum first started to pick up and um, it, there was a bill that was passed stating that this gap was an important gap to close and um, but it wasn't well it was pa it was about to be passed and it, then it had to go to bond uh, the bond commission to get funding and, and Pam was instrumental in speaking to different people about making sure that that funding got passed for this for this trail so Pam has been a huge advocate and I thank you for that Pam I want to mention uh, Lori Giannotti who's here Lori where are you in, in the back so Lori is uh, she is the trails and greenways program coordinator and she's a member of the greenways council and Lori has always been so supportive of Bolton's efforts to get grants to support to fund this trail. Um, I've worked with her and she's just so easy to work with. She's so cooperative and she's a huge trail advocate. So thank you, Lori, for your support. Uh, Bruce Donald is here. Where is Bruce? There we go in the yellow jacket. Uh, Bruce is chairman of the Connecticut Greenways Council and he has always been a huge supporter of trails, uh, not only in locally but also statewide and nationwide and you'll be hearing a little bit more from him later. Uh, to, is Tom Galliota here? Um, okay, but I just want to, Tom Galliota has always been a big trail advocate as well and a, and a good friend. Um, Sylvia Unpu Adams is here. Where? Green. There. Uh, Sylvia and also Barbara Amodio, who are uh, chairman of the of Bike Walk Bolton, have been uh, trail advocates for a long time, and they they were they participated in the in the talks uh, with DOT about design details, which really made this trail turn out to be a, a very user friendly trail. And through social, their excellent use of social media, they've really heightened the awareness of the trail and the importance of the significance of the trail. So thank you, Sylvia, for that. <laughs> and I, I also now want to mention the DOT team. Uh, this trail, I never felt that this trail was imposed on the town of Bolton. This trail, working with DOT, was a pleasure. Um, and Will Britnell with the San Diego uh, sweatshirt on right here was the um, principal engineer and he always received comments uh, with with thought thoughtfully he never said no to I mean he never said no first he always thought about the comments <laughs> first <laughs> um, but he was he was communicative he responded to emails he just was very, very thoughtful and a great leader of the project, especially the, the, the bridge was a really hard part of the project. And um, because there was at one time we were thinking about maybe it should go past Georgina's and there was a lot of, it just a lot of uh, uh, opposition to that. And, and, and Will led that, that, whole, that whole process very, very smoothly. So thank you, Will. Is, is Mike Lashua here? 
<laughs> Yay, hi. So Mike was on the design team as well from DOT, and uh, he, he was excellent to receiving comments. I, rem I remember talking to him about what kind of wood is actually being used on that fencing, which you think like, oh, come on, how can you be talking about a detail like that? But knowing what kind of wood, knowing is important because if it's going to rot in two years, we don't want it. And Will did the research, I mean, sorry, Mike did the research and I think it's black locust, Gwen. You know, he was, so he was really detail oriented, very willing to listen to comments like, do we need all that fencing? Can you shorten it? Can you move it? So thank you for, for being such a good listener. Uh, I want to mention you, there's a beautiful horse over here with, uh, and the horse's owner's name is Sandy Stavens. I don't know what the horse's name is. Name Brewski. Brewski? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so Sandy said that she rides the trails and uh, this is a really, a, a, this is important to see. This is a multi-use trail and it just points out the fact that it's not just for humans, it's for animals as well and people walk their dogs all the time and there are riders and there's also a Connecticut horse a patrol that monitors trails they'll, they'll go out on rides and if there's downed trees or vandalism they will report it to whoever they should report it to so I think it's a it's a wonderful um, group and I, I appreciate Sandy you bringing Brewski here today no, oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> dogs too. Yeah, dogs. Dogs too. <laughs> so that's that's all I'm going to say at this for now. I'll be back. Um, but now I'm going to introduce um, a few different speakers who are going to give some short remarks. And the first one I'm going to introduce is Sandy Pierog, who's the first selectman of Bolton. Thank you, Gwen. Um, and thank all of you. There was a long, long list that um, Gwen mentioned, and without the efforts of each and every one of you and the support of the community behind them, um, this never would have gotten done. So um, we're very grateful, and it's so heartwarming to see so many people here today who are both town residents and trail users. So please enjoy the day. Uh, help yourself to some refreshments, and um, thank you again for coming. Before I give the microphone back to Gwen, though, I've totally lost them, my new town administrator, our new town administrator, Josh Kelly, is over there. Um, Josh has been uh, a great addition to the town. Every day, I thank the stars that brought him to us. And um, I'm sure that you will um, learn to love and trust him as much as the Board of Selectmen does. So thank you again. Thank you, Stevie. And now I want to introduce Senator Steve Cassano. And I cannot say enough about Steve. Uh, he's just the, just the most approachable, kind, sensitive person and he we are lucky to have him in the legislature and as trail users we're lucky that he was there always advocating for this trail for years and uh, without him I'm not sure this trail would have would have been built so I want to introduce Steve to say a few words thanks very much this is uh a day that many of us have looked forward to for a long time. Uh, I can actually say that back, it was in the 1970s when Bill O'Neill Phil appro first approached me, 1978 I think it was, about building a bike trail in Manchester. I thought he was totally nuts. Uh, and I knew I would take a lot of heat for doing it. We had what we called the liaison system at that time and I had parks and recreation, so I was the one who was stuck with Bill O'Neill. And uh, I'd look in the mirror and I'd see Bill. I'd go around town and I'd see Bill. Uh, and if you know Bill O'Neill, you know I'm not exaggerating. He is the most persistent man I've ever seen. Uh, as a result of that, the first piece, the first trail, is the piece from uh, McKee Street, Keeney Street, down towards East Hartford. And we have built on since then. For many of you that have watched the trails develop, you saw this one go up in no time, while the one that connects with it in Manchester was about four years to take to, to finish, 
because of uh, legal issues, incompetence, and a whole bunch of things. Uh, I, I can't say enough about DOT. Um, DOT was in a tough position there. They weren't building it. They had a contract, and the contract had to be upheld, and the legal system had to work, and so it got very frustrating. Somebody who thought they were going to be in a trailer for a year in Manchester was there for probably three or four years in that trailer. Uh, I used to go by once in a while just to say hello because it, it was getting pretty lonely out there. Um, but it's a system. It's a trail system, and that's so important. What I appreciate the most is going back to when we first started, the criticisms have not changed. People are going to be raped and robbed and this and that and so on. When I look at the trails, particularly in the summertime, I see people with baby carriages, the kids on tricycles, uh, on a whole variety of different things. People walking, enjoying themselves all times of day, all times of, right up until dark. Uh, seniors, uh, that's their exercise. They'll park and they'll walk. They'll take two cars, one down the other end, so they can go. They're smart. They go downhill, and uh, and and, and uh, you know it works. Uh, but it's a system for everyone, and and so I'm proud to be a part of this. Uh, I miss Pam. Uh, Pam was great on the house side. We needed to have that kind of cooperation to get this money. It was extremely difficult, uh, and that's something that uh, that. On a bipartisan basis, when you got two parties working together for a project, it works a hell of a lot better. And uh, so, uh, Pam, thanks again for all your efforts uh, uh, because it couldn't have been done. Uh, I couldn't do it alone. She couldn't do it alone. But together, working with the town, uh, Bobby, you were terrific in this whole process. Uh, and then you wouldn't stop. <laughs> you wouldn't stop. So. Uh, that's the leadership that's needed. The local leadership has to be there for it to happen. And the local leadership in Bolton was extremely uh, efficient. And so I'm just proud to be a part of it. And uh, thanks again to DOT, particularly uh, uh, what you went through with public hearings and things like that. Uh, they're used to it. Uh, they're, they're rocks. Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, when it's built and when it's done, all of that's put aside. And so we look forward to people using it and enjoying it. Thanks very much. Thank you. Now I'd like to introduce the mayor of Manchester, Jay Moran. And uh, this, is a, this is a regional asset. It's not just for the town of Bolton. And Bolton and Manchester are right next door. And people who are riding or walking through Bolton are probably riding and continuing along and, and riding through Manchester. So this is really a, uh, it's a, it's a shared asset between our towns and other towns as well. So Mayor Moran. Thank you. I don't know if this is, is this working? It's not working, so it's, don't. No, no, no. For, you um, hold it. Oh, for you? It's yeah. For oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> for everybody. I talk, I'm Irish, but I talk like people. an Italian. It's for I'm your losing. people. It's okay, for your people. You. Your people. Well, good morning. And folks, you know, it's nice to come out to the country and see you casual dress as a half a mile down in the big city of Manchester. We still have to dress up on Saturdays. So, um, thanks for having me here, and thank you for, uh, you know, we have two great communities back to back, but it's about four communities. It's about the loop in, the, in East Hartford, Manchester, Bolton, and Vernon, and, um, you know, last year I received a municipality award um, from the DEP for the Greenways, and it wasn't my award. I, I found out it was Bill O'Neill who nominated and got me the award. <laughs> Bill, thank you. I deserve it after listening to you every single day. Thank you. But, but the best part, Bill, is I got up and shined my $150 shoes, and they were shot because we were in a woods somewhere with the DEP, <laughs> and I had to replace them with the $50 sales shoes here. But anyways, Bill O'Neill. Folks, I, I, all the folks you've mentioned done a great job, but this guy doesn't stop. We're trying to close this 20-mile loop by the rail. You ever deal with the railroad? That is not easy. Bill, you might be easier to deal with, but uh, we're dealing with connecting those final two pieces, and you know he's got me dealing with the hospital, and then they sell the hospital, and then we got to deal with new people, but we're working on it because that 20-mile loop is phenomenal. It's something to be proud. When I talk about Manchester, one of the set few things, I, first things I talk about is our parks and our trails, and let me do this commercial message. Tomorrow morning at Charter Oak, I see my friend of Rotary in motion, East Hartford Rotary, Manchester Rotary, have a big event on the trails tomorrow morning, come on out, right down the street. So, um, but it's the parks and trails we talk about because we're so proud of them. And yes, I've become a walker now, I can't jog because of my bad disc, and I walk the trails sometimes, and I walked it after a burst, one of those tornado bursts, I was on the phone with the general manager, we got a tree across the trail, it was up in a few minutes. 
I used to ride and jog over on the Vernon Manchester line, and when you, you knew when you left Vernon in Manchester because our side was horrible. Since then, we've cleaned it up. Thank you for the general manager and our public works for listening. So we're all for taking credit for this. All four towns are working on this for you folks, the trails people, that we can bike, we can walk, we can run, and we can enjoy exercise, which is so important today. And keep, my phone keeps buzzing because my oldest daughter, 28-year-old, is on the half marathon, and I'm getting an update. And my old, my 26-year-old is on the marathon. So we believe in exercise and the trails and the Moran family. And I'm glad that all you folks come together to make it a healthy, not only community, but region. And I love working my friends across the line in the country. Sandy, Bob, I thought we got rid of you. Welcome yeah. back. <laughs> and of course, Steve. I didn't do anything. He did it all as mayor. I love him to death. <laughs> Anyways, have a great day. Thank you. Uh, now we're going to hear from Matthew Vale, who is principal engineer th from the Bureau of Engineering and Construction at, at DOT. Thank you. I feel privileged to be here today to see, I'm going to say, both projects open to the public. As we all know, all the easy trails have already been built. So these last gaps are the real difficult ones. This was a difficult one. This trail here, we've completed three miles of multi-use trail across two different towns. It's required two large pedestrian bridges, one 142 feet long, one 173 feet long. And we've also built about one third of a mile of retaining walls in order to fit this in this corridor. This is no typical rails to trails location. We started design back in 2011. We started construction in 2015, and we've just recently finished. There were eight years of challenges and hard work that got us to where we are today. And we could not have done that without the great support from both the town of Bolton, the town of Manchester, all the elected officials, the bike advocates, and certainly the local community. <clears throat> The East Coast Greenway has approximately 200 miles through the state of Connecticut. Completing these two pieces have gotten us close to 99 miles of that being off-roadway. About 16 miles of trail have been built since 2016. Past administrations have committed the department to filling these, fixing these gaps and making sure that they've been completed. And these projects are evidence that we continue to do so. Currently in design, we also have the last gap of the Farmington Canal Heritage Trail in Plainville. That is also part of the East Coast Greenway, and that's the last gap because of the many challenges it has as well. Again, I'd like to thank you for having us here today, um, and a many thanks to the people in the department that made this happen, from the designers in the office, Mike, to all the construction personnel in the field. Thank you. Very nice. And our, our last speaker is Bruce Donald, who is chairman of the Connecticut Greenways Council. Thank you. So I'm, I'm the chairman of the Connecticut Greenways Council. My day job is I am the tri-state coordinator for the East Coast Greenway Alliance. So I have uh, New Jersey, New York, and Connecticut. And in fact, uh, this last week I was three days in New Jersey, uh, part of it in the pouring rain, looking at projects down there and helping out down there. And um, I wanted to echo uh, some of your comments because uh, in fact, uh, with Bloomfield just completed, uh, we're now over 50% done in Connecticut. Nationally, to give you an idea, uh, we're almost exactly a third done, 33%. So Connecticut, and, and in fact, most of the New England states are, are, are way above some of the southern states. You know, Florida's kind of 30% 30, 30 done. Georgia's 8% done, to give you an idea. Uh, so, so this is a situation where we have, we have something of a luxury uh, here in this state, which is we have a DOT that is behind building this spine trail in Connecticut. There's 200 miles of trail out of 3,000, by the way. Uh, uh, 15 states in the District of Columbia. Uh, it's been called the Urban Appalachian Trail because it goes through all of the capital cities uh, and, our, and our national capital in D.C. and 450 communities, of which this is one. And 
we're proud to be working on this. We really are. And now I'll take off that hat and I'll put back on the, the Greenways hat. Uh, the Connecticut Greenways Council is a legislative, legislatively appointed body. There's 11 of us. Uh, and we spend a lot of time talking about where trails should be in Connecticut. And thanks to Bill O'Neill, who of course is, is on that <laughs> committee with me, uh, we never stopped talking about this one, literally. And the timelines, and, I, I, and I'm gonna, I can talk about this for hours, as you all know, but I'm gonna leave you with one thought, which is the timelines. Uh, it does take a long time to build these facilities. And there's a lot of reasons for that. Um, it's tough to get the initial funding uh, to do uh, actual a survey of where it needs to go. Um, and then the actual design. That money is not easy to find either. Once you finally have that, though, you have something that can be built. And you can go to DOT and say, you know, let's get in line for the federal uh, uh, TA money or whatever it's going to be. In this particular case, uh, Connecticut state bonding money built this. And that's an important distinction because there are very few states that do that. And Connecticut's one of the very few that does. Uh, so just, just to kind of go full circle, um, I was reminded the other day that I've been helping to build bike trails for 19 years now. And uh, it is astonishing the amount of work that's been done in that time frame. And it's so much easier to build bike trails now than it used to be because the people who would come and say that they're going to steal our babies uh, <laughs> have basically been shouted down now because it just isn't true. Uh, the, the crime doesn't exist. The, uh, what does exist is community building, uh, health, economic development, and all those fun things that happen when you build a bike trail in your community. So, thank you. Thank you. And we're just gonna have one more brief comment by Jan Daly, a Manchester resident. And just, yeah, really have to speak up because this is not in okay? All right. I just want to let you know I'm a resident right across from Camp Meeting Road, and I would have many inquiries about who was going to use this trail. And I had to be rather defensive at times because they felt it was too much money. But I want you to know that I have an elderly neighbor, he's in his late 80s, who had open heart surgery last November and he was out on the trail no. with his walker no. as part of his rehabilitation doing this on his own. So it really does indeed fill a gap. Yeah.